This Samsung A22 5G might only be a few years old, but it looks as though it's seen quite the abuse. The A series of Samsung phones are their more affordable range. What this means for us is hopefully a cheaper repair. Released in 2021, this one is only two years old. I purchased it online from a phone recycler for 50 Australian dollars, or around 30 US. I'm guessing that most of that money is profit for the seller who likely got the phone as part of an e-waste drop-off. Once unboxed, we can see we got the phone we paid for. And it functions just fine, however the display is badly shattered, and it looks like someone's been trying to use this, as evident by the sticky tape that's been applied over the front screen. To repair this particular A22 5G, we're going to need a display assembly, adhesive for the rear panel, and a camera lens. I'll move the device over to a heat plate for a few minutes to loosen up the adhesive, securing in the back panel. Once it's warmed up enough, I'm going to use a suction cup and a plastic pick to work the back panel free. It came free very easily. In fact, too easily. At a closer inspection, I can see a loose screw has stunk to the adhesive on the back panel. There's also been a mixture of glue used to fasten the back. Inside, there's another missing screw and a few loose ones. I'll proceed in the disassembly by unfastening the Phillips screws, securing the mid-frame and camera lens in place. With the lens out, you can see someone has already done some damage to one of the screw taps. As it's also quite scratched, we'll replace it later on. Once all screws have been removed, the frame can be unclipped from the remainder of the phone. This is the most difficult step in the repair, as it can be hard to free the clips without damaging the frame. On this particular phone, there's also a cable for the fingerprint sensor that attaches to this frame. I recommend attaching it as soon as possible, as the frame can spring free and rip the cable right off. Inside is further evidence of prior repair. A plastic film has been disregarded and left to float around inside. There also appears to be excess glue that has seeped behind the mid-frame and onto the speaker during the reassembly process. And I just can't get over this face that's been scribed onto the copper heat spreader. Proceeding, it's time for the motherboard to come out. This involves disconnecting three flex cables, two antennas, and one screw. It was at this point I noticed a bend in the motherboard, as it had not been installed correctly. It's only minor, and in a spot that's not all that important, so hopefully it hasn't caused any real damage. As for the specifications of this motherboard, it's packing a MediaTek MT6833, 4 to 8 gigs of RAM depending on the model, and 128 gigs of storage. With the motherboard out of the way, we can remove the earpiece speaker and button flex cable. Down at the lower section is the speaker and charge port, both of which we'll also need to remove. There's a little bit of muck that's come through the headphone jack, but nothing we can't clean off. With the vibration motor out of the phone, the last thing in this display assembly is the large 5000 mAh battery. With the use of some alcohol and prying tools, we can work it free. And just like that, our 5000 mAh battery has been removed. With a manufacturing date of 2022, there is no need for any replacement. So it will be going right back in. With that, we've disassembled the Samsung Galaxy A22 5G. And it's time for our new display assembly to be unboxed, so all the parts can be reinstalled. This new display assembly cost me 80 Australian dollars or around 50 USD. It comes with the new display, frame and battery adhesive. As for everything else, well that's going to come from our old frame. With the vibration motor and charge port in place, the speaker can be attached and screwed back into place before attaching the earpiece speaker and the buttons to the side of the frame. With that, it's time for our motherboard to go back into place, making sure to properly latch it on the right-hand side. 
Preceding that, I can route and attach the antenna wires. It's now time for the battery to go in. I'll remove the tape from the new LCD connector before removing the protective film over the new adhesive. With the battery in place, it can simply be pressed down to secure it. Then I can go ahead and attach the remaining flex cables before we give the phone a quick test. And I found a problem. While the volume up and down buttons work, they're very insensitive. So I purchased a replacement and will swap them out. This couple of dollar part will save a lot of hassle for its next user. So after taking the motherboard back out, I can install the new cable. With that, it's time to get this phone fully reassembled. Starting by putting that motherboard back into place. Before attaching the mid-frame, I'll give the insides of the phone a quick wipe down with a microfiber cloth to remove any dust or fingerprints. Of course, first attaching the fingerprint sensor before the battery. After it's clipped down into place, I can install the camera lens and the remaining Phillips head screws. With one screw missing from the previous repairer, I got out my bag of Samsung screws and salvaged one Phillips head screw to replace the missing one. Then I can remove all the old adhesive on the mid frame before we get our new back panel attached. I removed the plastic protective film in anticipation for its installation, even wiping down the internals before realizing an issue. Can you see it? The LED flash looks different on the new camera lens. As it turns out, it's lacking the diffuser, so I'll transfer it across from the old lens. With that, it can be reinstalled into the phone before we attach the back panel. Pressing the back into place, making sure it's sealed down on all four sides. And we're done. So this is it, a Samsung Galaxy A22 5G repaired and back up and running. Like many Samsung A-series phones, this one was quite an easy fix. With similar Phillips head screws throughout and fairly cheap replacement parts. And on that note, this has been Hugh Jeffrey's video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the phone restoration playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.